the ground and, you know, find its sources of food and water and regroup and reorganize itself and then pop up in an entirely new form. Maybe years later. Huh? And that process is already going on. Nobody can stop it. The spores have already gone out. It's too late. Huh? See, that's the thing about the demons. They're always, they're always a day late and a dollar short. You know? They think they can stop it. But by the time they realize that, that they, they need to stop something, it's already too late. The Lord has already arranged for some other thing to have, you know. There's no way that you can trace it because it's transcendental. And if you don't have access to the transcendental world, you can't, you, you can't even understand how it's happening. Huh? So, you know, I'm not going to be like Srila Prabhupada and pretend that it didn't happen. It happened. It's, it's gone. It's already off. It's too late. Huh? So I'm just going to retire. And then the next teacher will come along when it's time. And you won't be able to do anything about that one either. <laughs> so, you know, try to understand. This Krishna consciousness movement is unstoppable. The demons have tried their best for the last 5,000 years. And now their time is almost up and they're getting desperate. Huh? They know they're being kicked out. Their time is, is very limited. Only a couple more years. So they're trying all their worst tricks. Uh, but it's not going to work. They can't win. Uh, how can you win against Vishnu? You can't win. Uh, he's always going to trick you because he can act from within anyone's heart. You see? He can give knowledge that completely defeats all other knowledge. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can't stop it. Huh? So you may get all bent out of shape. Oh, too bad. Don't have a heart attack now. Huh? If you wake up tonight with a lion on your chest, you know, just, just relax, breathe deeply. You know? We happen to know that lion very well. <laughs> So try to understand, this, this esoteric teaching can't be stopped. Uh, the demons have tried their best. They haven't been, been successful. Uh, so it's going to go on. Whether we do it or whether somebody else does it is completely immaterial, completely. It doesn't even, doesn't even enter the consideration. This is Krishna's disciplic succession, and he is going to arrange for its continuation. Not any human intelligence, not any human being. Huh? And similarly, no, no conditioned being can stop it either. Huh? By the time they realize what's going on, it's already too late. Huh? Uh, that was certainly the case in Srila Prabhupada's uh, Srila Prabhupada's pastimes, and it's also the case in our pastimes. So, oh well. I think uh, there's an essay by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta on, on organized religion that talks about exactly this. Does it really? Yes. Oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> I pull it up over here on the website. Uh -huh. I'll just read a couple of sentences yeah? that talk about this directly. Yeah, yeah, let's hear from Bhakti Siddhanta. The Putanas, whose congenial function is to stifle the theistic disposition wait, and the... Wait, 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 wait. Read slowly and enunciate. Okay. The Putanas, whose congenial function is to stifle the theistic disposition at the very moment of its suspected appearance. But the theistic disposition can never be stifled by the efforts of these Putanas. The Putanas have power only over the atheist. It is a thankless but salutary task which they perform for the benefit of their unwilling victims. The bona fide teacher of the Absolute heralds the advent of Krishna by his uncompromising campaign against the pseudo-teachers of religion. The effective silencing of the whole race of pseudo-teachers of religion is the first clear indication of the appearance of the Absolute on the mundane plane. Wow. That's great. 
that's just fantastic. I love it. Yeah. So you see, all this has been going on for many thousands of years. You know, those of you who just tuned in, <laughs> there's been this grand uh, drama going on for thousands of years since the uh, so-called fall of the Vedic civilization. Actually, it didn't fall. It just kind of disappeared a little bit. Uh, just kind of faded out of manifestation a little bit. Uh, and now it's coming back. And in either case, there's nothing that anybody in this material world can do to change that, to stop it, to alter its course, to, to stop it or change its path. Uh, so we're simply the, um, you know, very, very unimportant servant of, of all this. And... Uh, you know, we like to watch it go down. It's amusing sometimes. And uh, it's very enlightening to watch how Krishna uh, so intelligently outfoxes the demons every single time. You know? And they think they win. This is the funny part. That they think they win. He fools them completely. They think they win. and all. But actually what they've done is simply condemn themselves to a hellish existence. You know? Like the, the people who killed Jesus Christ, or tried to kill Jesus Christ, huh? the, the Jews, the Orthodox Jews, huh? they tried to kill Jesus. They don't like these enlightened souls, you know. So they infiltrate his movement, and then they get, try to get close to him, and then they try to arrange his downfall. And we know how they work. We're very well schooled in it. Huh? We've seen it happen so many times. We know all the symptoms. We know all the signs. And we also know that what they can't stand is the light of day. Uh, they can't stand the, the scrutiny of uh, a normal people. Uh, they live in a world of lies and propaganda. And they can't function outside of that world. And once they're brought out into the truth, well, you know, they lose all their potency. You know, so they, they killed or tried to kill Jesus. And what happened? As a result, the temple was destroyed. Jerusalem was sacked. Uh, all of the Jews were scattered all over the world uh, 80 years later because of that offense, because of that mad elephant offense. Well, the mad elephant offense has been committed again uh, to Srila Prabhupada. And because of that offense, now, the whole global corporate demon civilization is crumbling. Huh? The, despite all the schemes of the bankers and the arms dealers and all the politicians and all the rascals, huh? it's going down. And we're really happy about that. And we don't care if it takes us down with it. Because our job is already done. We were successful. We made it. Huh? Before they even knew that we were here, before they even took notice of, it, of us, we completed our mission. We already passed the torch to the next Acharya. See, this movement is transcendental. Huh? So you can't imagine. You can't imagine how it's operating, how it's working. See, it's not dependent on some outward form. That's the mistake of the demons. They always think in terms of the outward form. And they don't see the inward essence at all. Oh, well. So anyway, um, we're going to India. We're going to retire. We're going to just absorb ourselves in Harinam and uh, exit stage left. <laughs> You know, we don't we don't have any taste for all this drama. The whole the whole world is going to be falling apart and firing nuclear weapons at each other and who knows what else. But um, we really don't care about that. That's that's not it's inconsequential. Huh? Inconsequential. You know what that word means? It does not affect what happens next. 
It does not affect the result. The result is already there. Uh, we might be separated from it in time. But if we know the principle of this esoteric teaching, we can see it quite clearly. We don't need to guess what's going to happen. We already know. Krishna is going to win. Uh, Lord Vishnu Lord Vishnu is going to prevail over his enemies. Uh, this always happens. So, uh, you know, we're going to change the game. We're going to end the game and get on with the real life of transcendental knowledge. That's this esoteric teaching. There's a couple more questions. Oh, questions, more questions. Maybe if I keep talking, they'll come up with more questions. Uh, Amit asks, is that why Srila Prabhupada 